of hard to talk to you right now It's sort of tough to figure this all out Through the fog of all my tears The culmination of my fears Has come to drag me to this sobering truth This is real life I am still me And you are still you Questioning my faith and I don't care Oh God, it hurts to even breathe in this despair And I can't say it'll be okay How could you bring me here in this way? You love me so you say, but I am hurting This is real life If you're faithful Welcome back and again, I will say I hope you have been enjoying your time with Abba. You know, I sit here and I think, I also am praying that you have received the gift of a resting place. That is who our daddy Abba is. He does give us a resting place we can be quick to overlook that but he does uh, last week I talked a lot about the Lord is my shepherd we shall not want he maketh me lie down in green pastures so what are your green pastures I this tree house has become my green pastures this tree house that is my resting place and a place that I just can um, get away from it all. It's not too far from my house. I mean, it, my house is just um, right behind the cameras, um, but it seems so secluded, this tree house, this resting place. What's so funny is I didn't even know I had such a beautiful resting place. I didn't know that I wanted such a beautiful resting place until the resting place was provided. Uh, this, this tree house came to be because of my husband's vision and I didn't even know he had this vision. I didn't even really realize how beautiful the woods in our backyard were. This has always been here. These woods, this peacefulness. But I didn't know it. I tell you all this because if you haven't yet found your resting place, look deeper, look harder. Or I'll pray that someone special in your life will help you see it, will help you unwrap it. Uh, I had said at the beginning of our time together that I had chosen this place because it is a restful place. So to welcome you this week, I really am praying that you have found a place of rest to sit with Daddy Abba. It helps. It helps. This week, you're going to be really looking into the love of the Father. We've been walking through that. That's hopefully been playing out and you have come to see God more as Daddy Abba than you've ever seen him before. I hope and pray that at the very least you are not seeing him as that judge looking down with scowled eyes, but at the very least that you see him 
with a gentle smile. I hope that. God is love. He's so much love that he had to create us. He couldn't not create us. In the book, The Trinity, right now I can't remember the author, and I'm sorry for that, but um, the book, The Trinity, the author says, God just couldn't help but to create us. He created us to love us. Wow. Wow. He created us to love us. He created you to love you. And he knows all your history. And he loves you. So he, he just can't help but to love us. Now, the problem is that sometimes it's hard to even fathom that type of love because that is not a love that's been revealed to you in, in this world. Some are brought in to this world and exposed to things that they should never be exposed to. Treated in ways that they should never have been treated. And last week I, I talked on shame and when, when we're brought into this world and treated in ways that we never should be it's it's hard to fathom that true pure love can exist better yet it's hard to fathom a loving god as why would a loving god allow such bad things and we, I've talked in, in weeks prior about the reality that God gave us free will, freedom to choose, so that we wouldn't be his puppets. He did not want to create puppets. So we have free will. I also have spoken about our enemy and that whether you're you believe in Satan or not, he believes in you. He's out like a lion, ready to pounce. And the truth of the matter is, there's evil in this world. There is. And so bad things happen to good people. But when bad things happen to us, we can have a tendency to believe that it is because we're bad. And that is not true. That's the enemy lying to you. You're not bad. Bad things happen, but you're not bad. And there's a love that's much greater than the bad things. There's a love that can heal the wounds that those bad things caused there is I'm hoping that the time that you've spent has begun the healing um, this week spend some time reading uh, about people that had bad things happen to them and most of the times, the stories in the Bible pretty much give a, a comfortable, sweet resolution. And I love that. Because there is always, always, always redemption. There always is. But there's a story in the Bible of, of a beautiful young woman Tamar David's daughter and Tamar's brother or half brother was taken by her he, he was full of lust for her 
and he took advantage of her. And because of David's own proclivity for sin and have a wandering eye, he really didn't take care of that situation in his family well. And it played out poorly. The brothers were against brothers, sons running from father, and Tamar never really, from what I could see, she never really got re redeemed. And that, that one's hard for me to grab hold of in the sense of why don't we get kind of a happy ending here, Lord? Um, and I, I just, it's just one of those things, childlike faith. Daddy Abba, you are so good that I know you are with her and she was not alone. And some of you may really be able to relate to Tamar and really feel like everything around you is without redemption. That story, Tamar, was in the Old Testament, and we have been redeemed, and Jesus' blood has washed us clean. So, your Rabbi Savior is looking to you and loving you in spite of what happened to you, and it wasn't your fault. But I want to look at the other side of this story, and I want to look at why David did what David did, and how why it played out the way it did. And one of David's issues was he never took truly his issues to the throne to, to be changed. And so when we walk, we, we can accept our Heavenly Father we can ex in His love. We can accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. We can sit well at the well with Jesus and, and take on all His love and, and really feel washed clean from almost a, an intellectual place. But it hasn't quite yet changed our DNA. It hadn't changed us, so it hasn't changed our countenance. We are not able to love others as He has loved us. That's the other part of it. Remember, Jesus says, do you love me? He said to Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter said, yes. And He said, feed my sheep. So God calls us into this communion with Him to just allow His love to wash over us. But He wants that love to wash over us and change us, change our DNA. That that love radiates through us, that our countenance is changed, that, there, that we are we are walking so confidently in Christ that others see Christ in us. That as we sit at the well and we receive his love and we, we accept that he died on that cross for our sins, we receive that. But we receive it so fully that it's washed us clean and we receive it so well and we spend time with him on a daily basis filling our cup 
so much that our cup is overflowing, pouring love out onto others. Because there are others that are sitting at the well who want to receive love, but they are, maybe they're a lot like Rahab, or maybe they're even a lot like you were before you really received this purifying love that changed you. And so others are coming to the well and they're needing that love, but they are so fearful of this heavenly father that they've heard of, or they even haven't even heard of him, that they don't see Jesus sitting at the well. They just see you. You're to be Christ to them, not David, not somebody that's going to ignore what's, what's happened to them because you're so busy still receiving the love, but the love is overflowing through you so that you're loving them with this purity that only God can give you. So it calms them enough to all of a sudden see past you and see Christ. Not just Christ in you, but Christ. So we, the trick is to spend time with Daddy Abba. To breathe in his love and really breathe it in and feel the cleansing. And then still spend time with him so it will change you and change the way you see others and give you the ability to compassionately love, love without judgment. Jesus says, come follow me for I will teach you. My ways are gentle and humble. And so God calls us in to commune with him, but then he sends us out to the ends of the earth to be Christ-like to others, so others can come and receive his living water. When I'm full of anything but faith, you are faith.